although statistical methods are used from ancient times but non parametric methods have been used from 19th century only uh, the term non parametric was first introduced by wolfovich in 1942 but we can find scientists like uh, non parametric test in the fisher's seminal book in 1925 so we shall start this module with limitations of parametric inference then we shall discuss two important concepts namely distribution free and non parametric distribution free statistic uh, for example if we consider uh, samples uh, in observations from normal mu1 population then we find that the distribution of summation xi minus x bar square is chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom so this distribution does not depend on mu and hence this particular statistic that is summation xi minus x bar square is termed distribution free but if we consider some other distribution say cauchy distribution with location parameter mu then the distribution will be no longer chi square n minus 1 now next we introduce the concept of a non parametric distribution free statistic uh, for example if we suppose we have observations uh, say n observations n independent observations from a continuous population having symmetry at the origin and if we consider the statistic summation i from 1 to n indicator xi greater than 0 then the distribution of this sum of indicators is binomial with parameters n and probability of success probability x1 greater than 0 now due to symmetry this probability x1 greater than 0 is nothing but half and this is true for every underlying distribution having symmetry at the origin therefore the distribution of summation i from 1 to n indicator xi greater than 0 is independent of any f and this type of statistics are termed non parametric distribution free but in our forthcoming modules we shall refer such statistics as non parametric and the procedure will be referred as a non parametric uh, next we shall uh, give some uh, uh, exploratory data analysis explaining the need of non parametric inference we shall discuss uh, some non parametric methods and actually we shall start with the shortcomings of a parametric inference actually in parametric inference what we do we assume some distributional form and then do the appropriate statistical analysis for that statistical model but in uh, most of the times this uh, data the distribution of the data is not known so what to do uh, it may be possible that one uh, adopt some parametric inferential procedure for this type of data and he will end up with some conclusion which may not be valid for this data so better we start with some real life example suppose the average weekly sales of a new cell phone are collected for 12 consecutive weeks from a particular shop and are given below so there are 12 sales figures and the average weekly sales was 125 units for the last year it is known so the sales so it is uh, of interest to know whether the current year sales exceeds the last year sales so this can be made in terms of a statistical hypothesis uh, if mu is the true weekly sales then we are interested in testing the null hypothesis mu equal to 125 against alternative mu greater than 125 so this is a single sample problem and if we assume that now normality of the data then the usual statistical test in this context is a single sample t test uh, if we run the uh, r code for the t test we get the p value as 0.56 and the value of the t statistic as minus 0.156 and the corresponding degrees of freedom as 11 so this p value is quite high and far from 0.05 or 5% level so the evidence is not enough to reject the null hypothesis therefore the conclusion in this case is that there is evidence is not sufficient to conclude that there is an increase in the true mean weekly sales so it might be possible that this is the final conclusion but this final conclusion is not validated because we are using t test and t test is not a test uh, t test is a test is a parametric test based on some assumptions 
So, in actually, uh, these t tests are valid provided observations are drawn from a normal parent population or the sample size is sufficiently large, say at least 30. In our example, uh, we have only 12 observations, so we must check whether the underlying population is normal or not. What we do? Uh, we use uh, some simple data descriptive techniques. Uh, for example, we use uh, some histogram. Uh, actually, histogram is the simplest uh, descriptive method to check the shape of the data uh, in a easy manner. Uh, in particular, a symmetric bell-shaped histogram is an indicator of normality. So, when we plot the histogram, we find that this is not symmetric and this is not bell-shaped. Uh, actually, the histogram looks like some U-shaped curve. So, this data is far from the normality. At least, uh, the histogram is concerned. Uh, naturally, the sales data as shown by the histogram is far from being symmetric. Therefore, the sales data cannot be suspected from a uh, originated from a normal distribution. Uh, actually, there are some other confirmatory tests. For example, one is uh, the normal QQ plot test, QQ plot, uh, and this is the simplest and the perhaps the best way to check this, uh, to use uh, for the normal QQ plot. In a normal QQ plot, the quantiles of the observed standardized data set are plotted against the corresponding quantiles of a standard normal distribution. And for normal parent, we expect that these two quantiles match. So, for the normal parent population, the result should be a plot of points over a straight line or at least uh, scattered over a straight line. If you see the QQ plot, we find that uh, the observations are scattered and the red line uh, actually ideally points should lie on the red line, but there are so many points which are uh, above and below of the red line. So, it is confirmed that the underlying distribution is not normal. We find that the observed quantiles are too far from those of a standard normal distribution and hence the normal assumption is not reasonable. T-test is not trustworthy for the sales data set. So, we have used, uh, we have get uh, some p-value of 0.54 is not significant to reject the null hypothesis. P-value is not valid as the distributional assumption is not validated. What we observe? Uh, Actually, in the previous problem, we have adopted a parametric method, that is a student t-test. And a t-test requires the estimation of the assumed population parameters. Here we have, for the t-test, we assume normality and, and naturally such methods uh, require a number of assumptions as for example, normality of the underlying data set. And, but there are situations in which one or more of these assumptions may be violated so that the traditional or parametric methods of analysis lacks appropriateness. So, we find that the data set for the sales example is not normal, still we have used some t-test and therefore the results are uh, not validated. So, we can't use the observations or the inference obtained from the test, from the t-test. In uh, parametric methods, we use some distributional assumptions and estimate the parameters and then uh, use the appropriate techniques, maybe like load ratio test or maybe Neven Pearson lemma to get some testing procedures. But uh, if the distributional assumption is not valid, then these traditional methods uh, are not uh, actually adopted because they may be uh, misleading. So, in practice, we have a variety of data which are non normal. For example, uh, the we can have positively skewed data where the concentration is towards the higher values of the data set. We, we may have, uh, for example, we, we can have a log normal distribution or gamma distribution which is positively skewed, which gives uh, positively skewed data. And in those cases, the normality assumption and the corresponding t-test is not valid. Uh, there may be also negatively skewed data. Here also the normality assumption is not valid, so we can't use t-test. The histogram or the data uh, looks like uh, J-shaped. Actually, uh, we have, uh, we can, we use exponential distribution in life testing problems. So, this, uh, in this case, we find that uh, the data is J-shaped. That is, 
uh, it decreases over time and therefore uh, since uh, this is not symmetric we can't use normal distribution for the appropriate analysis and there may be also some u-shaped data and uh, u-shaped data it is though it is uh, symmetric but is not uh, bell-shaped and therefore we can't use normal distribution and normal uh, derivatives as uh, t-test and z-test for our purpose and uh, finally uh, there could be some mixture data where we may have some two peaks or three peaks and so normally this uh, here the normal assumption is not valid and we can't use the appropriate t-test so what to do in such cases if we have if we have data from log normal distribution exponential distribution or gamma distribution uh, if we don't know the parent distribution if we know the parent distribution then we can use the appropriate uh, parametric methods but in most of the cases the distribution underlying is not known and we have to use some inferential procedure and non parametric inference is the only alternative in such cases so uh, since uh, there is no parametric assumption we need to adopt the opposite of a parametric method that is a non parametric methods uh, which are an alternative series of statistical methods requiring very limited assumptions about the data actually non parametric methods assume that the observations are independent and they are from a continuous population and a range of methods are available to adopt in different circumstances so parallel to parametric inference there are a number of methods in non parametric inference for the same purpose but with limited assumptions uh, in particular uh, non parametric methods uh, make no specific assumptions about the distribution of the data except continuity so now we shall uh, discuss the pros and cons of non parametric methods uh, the main problem with parametric inference is that if the assumed distribution is not correct then all the efforts might went into vain and the best that is the efficient can become the worst for example in the sales data we have used t test without knowing its distribution so we find some p value and some t statistic but the results are not valid as the distribution of the data is far from normal so uh, if we adopted the non parametric methods in such cases then uh, we can accommodate non normal data for analysis efficiently so if the data is non normal we can still use non parametric methods without knowing the distribution of the underlying variable and the second advantage of non parametric methods is the robustness that is being efficient even under the assumption violation so in parametric inference we assume some uh, particular distributional form and some uh, particular distribution uh, with some uh, certain uh, parameters if the distributional assumption is violated then these results are of no use and in contrast to these methods our non parametric method uh, is robust that is remains efficient even when the assumptions are not validated but we can't use non parametric methods blindly and it is not always the most desirable procedure because uh, most of the non parametric methods use only ranks or signs of the observations discarding the further features of the data so uh, since we use only ranks or signs of the observations we uh, we just uh, discard the other features of the data only the sign of the observations are considered the magnitude is ignored so there is a loss of information and, and secondly uh, they are usually not as efficient as their parametric counterparts when the assumptions are made so uh, if the if it is known that the underlying distribution is normal and we use a t test then t test is the most efficient even if there are some non parametric methods for this problem so finally uh, although non parametric methods require fewer assumptions but they are used rarely in practice because most of the non parametric procedures are discard information so there is a loss of information and loss of information in reduced efficiency and specifically when we compute ranks for a highly skewed data actual values are discarded leaving only their order so loss of information limits the ability to detect true effects as compared to the parametric methods non parametric methods are primarily used or should be primarily used in situations 
when assumptions are grossly violated, that is when severe skewness in the data is present. That is, if we have, if we find a sign of severe skewness in the data, we must use non-parametric methods. And if the deviation from normality or if the deviation from symmetry for the data is uh, very nominal, we could use the normal t-test, and there will, and the, in that case, t-test will be efficient. So uh, we shall discuss in our next. Uh, next series of lectures uh, what are the basic ingredients of non-parametric methods and what are the uh, ma basic methods adopted in non-parametric statistics how estimation is done in non-parametric methods and how testing is performed in non-parametric methods so we have discussed the limitations of the traditional procedure that is the parametric procedure and introduced non-parametric inference uh, we have given some uh, real life example to explore the concept of non-parametric inference and of course the need of non-parametric inference. In our next modules, we shall discuss uh, non-parametric estimation in terms of u statistic and also provide some testing procedures, of course uh, non-parametric testing procedures for single sample and two sample problems. And finally, we conclude with a consideration of the comparison of different non-parametric tests, that is, in terms of asymptotic relative efficiency.